so yeah this is deepak just for the sake of recording um and i'm going to be your guide for the next uh, for this training i wanted to start with appreciating that you guys are spending your saturday evening with us here in india and and you know other times in on saturday in other time zone so definitely appreciate that i want to make sure it's worth your um efforts you're putting we we have a good product and um, and a good training for you guys so i want to keep it interactive so yeah feel free to put your questions in the chat we'll answer your questions um, as they come up or as i get to them so i'll try to keep an eye on the chat as much as possible but you know sometimes there may be some delays in the in getting to your questions but we'll cover things a to get you guys started and we are really excited about um um we're going to be using a saas environment today so that you guys have to spend very little time in the in configuration of the environment you're just going to be focused on um using the product and and seeing the benefits of it uh, right from the start so we'll we see most of the people are you know quite a few people have joined here we are expecting a few more um can we get a quick uh, message in the chat where what cities are people joining from what countries people are joining from so if you don't mind just put your city in the chat and it'll be good to see where all people are coming while we are waiting we'll give another 2 minutes or so to the few more folks to join Oh wow, we got some Dallas, Texas, we got Chennai, Hyderabad. That's good. We're getting coverage from and we got Bangalore now. Pune, very nice. We got a crowd from you know, multiple continents. That's really nice. good hey we'll put um we'll put uh us on the one more us city on the map here i'm here in uh, leesburg virginia so i definitely appreciate hema joining quite early in the morning it's even earlier for her than for me i thought i was the earliest person joining so definitely appreciate it so good we good. have um oh north carolina very nice we got um yeah shok from there that's very nice good we're getting coverage from different parts of the world Great, great. We got Texas. Very nice. We'll just give it one more minute here and we'll start at um at that time. So we have decent crowd at this point. You guys have my contact information on the screen right now, you know, so you guys have already, um, I'm already in the WhatsApp group, so you're welcome to reach me. If we can help you in any way, I'll be happy to point you to the right people or get you whatever help you need. Um, so yeah, you got me, my contact information there while we are waiting for, um, to get started it's getting a little chilly here in in virginia we've been getting kind of some really good days and some all of a sudden getting cold days 
Okay, so we'll get started. Um, as I said, my name is Deepak and uh, I'll be your guide. So let's uh, walk you through. We're gonna talk about end-to-end uh, -end monitoring and I have very few slides uh, and I'm gonna take you into the take you into the into the product very very quickly so just three four slides and we'll be uh, we'll be into the demonstration and then we'll get into the hands-on stuff so this is our quick uh, agenda we have gone over the we, we, we're gonna go over a quick demonstration of the product so that you have a clear understanding of what to expect and and what you're getting with AppliCare. And then we'll get into the hands-on labs where we will create a, we, we will provide you guys with a sample, uh, with a demo application and e-commerce application. And then you will deploy AppliCare agent in the, in that demo application on your own machine. So yesterday, all the groundwork which you guys did in terms of registering on our website, that gets you access to the to the applicator environment in, in the training environment. So you, if anybody hasn't registered yet, please go ahead and register. Uh, the links are in the in the WhatsApp chat. That way you you can use your user ID password from that registration to log in into applicator environment and you'll be able to deploy the agents um, on your machine locally so we will have um we will have this demo running in your own machine you'll be connecting it to the applicator running in the SaaS environment and you'll be getting the yeah you'll be able to monitor then we'll get into the monitoring what to monitor to what extent and when so these are the key questions in monitoring you know what to monitor to what extent uh, it should be monitored and when it should be monitored if either of these are off balance the the whole thing doesn't work i mean if you do too much monitoring there is a problem if you do too little monitoring there is a problem um so too little would leave you that you wouldn't find the problems in time. You will have to see, you'll have to have the problems occur many times before you can get to the bottom of them. Too much monitoring would cause performance impact. And if you are constantly fiddling the monitoring manually, then you're never gonna find the right thing at the right time. You, the chances of having the right monitoring at the right time is, very little so you can't have manual monitoring you need to have adaptive monitoring you need to have auto detection and that's what we'll we'll see with applicator so we'll cover these key aspects on you know how to get to the root cause of the problem in the very first occurrence of the issue the sooner we can detect problem the better off it is, the less expensive it is. So we'll we'll cover all those things. We'll talk about key business transactions, how to create them. We'll get into the tracing, alerting, and reporting. So we'll be able to kind of touch on these things because it's a it's a four hour training. So we'll be able to touch on it. You'll get enough uh, taste for the things, but you'll you can explore from there and and uh, we can take it from uh, from that point yeah feel free to put any questions you have on the in the chat so one of the thing which we uh, so one of the thing which we see in the we saw in the industry and we still see in the industry is that people are finding out of the problems with the symptoms so once the uh, once things are starting once the problem is starting to show up or it is causing the issues that's when people realize there was something happening 
if one gets into an ambulance and that's when they find out there was a heart problem developing, that's not a really a good way to find the problem. Similarly, what we see is that root cause analysis process is very people dependent. It requires the, the right technicians available. We compare it to the medical analogy. You know, if the right doctor isn't available to diagnose the issue, the results may not be good or are generally not good. So it, it's a very people dependent process. Similarly, in IT also, we are seeing that the troubleshooting is very people dependent. If every company has some tiger teams, you know, A teams, and if those people are not available at any point of time, when the problems occur, the root cause is not detected correctly and the problem has to occur again. And those kind of things are the ones which make problem uh, detection very expensive. So, so reacting to the problem, finding out with this outage or not being able to handle the load on Thanksgiving, you know, which is coming here very soon. So this week is Thanksgiving week now, and everybody is going to have huge sales and a lot of people go and shop and buy things for the Christmas. And so huge traffic on the sites. So companies need to prepare for prepare for that kind of huge surge in the traffic and plan for it, test for it, ensure that everything works well. Uh, please keep yourself muted um, so we don't have any background noise. Um, so rather than taking the reactive approach and finding the problems by getting into an ambulance, and not finding the right doctor in the in the hospital, we are changing that. We are making it proactive, and an early detection of the problem with with an artificial intelligence approach. So, I'll give you guys my background. Before founding Arcturus, I was one of this doctor myself, and I was helping customers on a every week basis identify problems in their environments, ensure their applications are working well, or if they are not working well, why they are not working well, helping them scale the um, scale the applications and scale the environments. So I was doing that. I was working for WebLogic Professional Services, and I was doing that every week at a new customer. So I really got tired of doing that over and over again. and. I wanted to automate what I'm doing, and that's how Applicare was born. Just to give you guys a little story on Applicare. So it was basically me getting tired of manually doing the problem detection, identifying where the bottlenecks are, uh, why application isn't scaling, and all those kind of things. What we realized was that Every customer we were going to, a, a bunch of us from professional services, uh, we, we realized that we were, every customer we were going to, we were doing similar things. You know, the similar problem patterns were coming up at different customers. So we built those problem patterns into an expert system at the very foundation of Applicare. So rather than Deepak coming to the site and doing the root cause analysis for you, Applicare is million times faster than me it doesn't need to take breaks. And once a machine is programmed to do something, it does extremely efficiently. It doesn't skip a beat. It doesn't miss anything. So that's where we see a significant improvement from taking the process from human to, to a machine. So we are able to make a significant impact, you know, soon after deploying our agents in the environment, with the help of machine learning and with the help of the foundational expert system which we have in Applicare. So you will see this in, in action very shortly. So as a result of that, we make the virtual team of experts available. So hundreds of Deepaks are 
constantly monitoring your environment and it doesn't miss. So Applicator doesn't miss a single method call. It doesn't miss a single transaction. It doesn't take breaks. So it makes a huge difference in the, in the net outcome. So I'm gonna take you into a, a quick demo of the product now so that we can cover what we're gonna be uh, playing with in the, in the labs. So let me just show you guys that and then we'll get into the labs. So give me one sec, let me share the browser here. Okay, so you guys, uh, Mahek, you guys see my demo screen? Yeah, we do. Great, thank you. So now what we have is um, we have a demo environment, which you guys, after registering, you must have gotten an email to, with the details on how to access this environment. And we also have a sample application, which we are using to, um, to show you how Applicare monitors the applications and the environment. So you, you guys have access to both the things um so you i'm not using anything which is only accessible by us so you also have access to this environment you can play with it later on and so on so what we'll do is what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and um do some transactions on this application and actually i'm going to go put the url in the chat for you guys um, would love to see a few transactions coming from, from your side too, then we can do comparison in the, we can make the demo more interactive. We can see how your experience is with the application versus how my experience is. So behind the scenes, this application is being monitored by Applicare and it's all running in the cloud. So we are, we are pretty cloud agnostic tool and we'll get into that um, later in the in the demo. So I'm just looking at a few items here. Um, I looked at the large angelfish, and then I'm gonna go and and look at the tiger shark here. I'm gonna go ahead. We have purposely added a little bit of slowness when we when we go to the tiger shark. So what we are doing with this example, what we are simulating emulating is that some transactions are slow that the same view item transaction when we look at other items everything is good but when we go to tiger shark there is an issue so out of say million transactions you have two transactions which are faulty which when there is a problem now it's really hard for an individual to identify those two transactions which were faulty out of million or millions of transactions. So that's where Applicare shines and constant monitoring comes in picture and we are able to identify the problem in the very first occurrence of the issue. So now I'm gonna take you into the Applicare here and I'm gonna log in into this Applicare console and once I log in, I'm able to see um, that I'm getting some requests from United States. Um, I'm getting some requests from India and I'm able to see what type of requests are coming in. So we, once we log in into Applicare, we get a, the first, we get the enterprise view. We don't have application specific details at this point. We're getting a, an enterprise view where every single application is is listed on the on the screen. We are able to see the the enterprise transaction scorecard, so we can see what is the overall load in the environment right now. There is not much load. It's a demo environment. Um, there's not much happening, but these requests will start showing up, and we are able to see. So the CIO's view or the the upper management view on the top that how is my entire enterprise performing. If are there issues coming, what's how many servers are having issues and so on. 
And then we get the details of every application. So here we have this JPET store application. I go into the, I click on that application and I get details on where the hits are coming from, what type of hits are coming in, you know, how is the health of the key business transactions? Are there any errors coming? We get to see the, the health over the period of time. If there were problems with the applications, we will see that here and so on. So if I go into a say longer time period here, uh, we'll, we'll see, yeah, there were some issues with the, we had some downtime, um, we were doing some upgrades on this application. So we can clearly see when the application wasn't available or when it was slow uh, and so on. So over the period of time, we start to get the picture of, you know, how the performance is um, at any point of time. So now, I also am able to see how is my capacity of the application. So this is a common question we get asked, um, how is the application doing with respect to capacity? Can I add another 30% load on the application um, and will it be comfortable? So here to, to answer that question, Technology folks have to go do the analysis in terms of how is every resource in the application performing behind the scenes. So we are able to, so we are constantly keeping an eye on that stuff and we are looking at every single resource which is a part of that application and we are able to, we are consolidating the data for those and we are able to see, hey, total of, I'm seeing a total CPU utilization of like one to 6%. Uh, for this application. So another 30% load wouldn't really make a big difference. So here I have started seeing, you know, 12 transactions per minute. So we got some hits from, from me and from some other folks. So we, we got some load on the application. So the numbers started to change uh, right there. So here I get a clear picture of how is my um, application with respect to the capacity. And if there are issues, we can drill down, drill down into the details to see what is what is causing the issue, which node is having the issue, and and so on. We can also get into the um, application flow, the service flow, the transaction flow. We can see who's talking to who. Um, if I am an application administrator, um, I want to see more details on the application. Then I can choose the application specific view and then I start to get the details on the you know different conversations which are going on within the application whatever services whatever nodes are coming in picture we are able to get down to the details of those and we are able to see um, how the application different pieces of application are performing so here I see that this app server, pet store app server is making call to the Derby database behind the scenes. And there are on an average four calls uh, per minute, total of 73 calls have been made in the last uh, 15 minutes and, and so on. We start to get more, more detailed data uh, in, the, in this transaction flow. And this is constantly updated. So right now this looks fairly simple, but as we get into more complex applications and more complex environment, you, you'll start to see uh, an amazing picture here and um, a very valuable pieces of data coming from there. So now let me drill down into the, the transactions which I did. So let me go into US here. I'm able to see uh, transactions coming from Virginia and I'm able to see the some requests are coming from Fredericksburg and and some coming from the other parts of the city, other parts of the, the country, the state. So I'm gonna drill down into that. And, and when I go here, so this is the transaction which we did for the tiger shark. And I'm able to see that it took significantly more time. So 642 milliseconds for the view item transaction here compared to the view item transaction here, it only took 55 millisecond. So there is a significant difference, more than 10 times difference in the performance of these two transactions. 
and we are able to see the details. So when I look at the details here at the bottom, I'm able to see here database is taking about a you know a milli two milliseconds. Here I'm spending 21 milliseconds and and so on. So overall 55 milliseconds, but everything looks normal here. Compared to this, let's look at this one here. When I'm taking 642 milliseconds, right there I see the database is the problem because we added a slow SQL in there. So this picture in itself is very valuable to see what is the, where the issue lies. Many times what we see at the customers is there are silo, there is silo based monitoring. There is a separate tool for database monitoring, separate tool for app servers monitoring, separate tools for user experience monitoring. So those kind of things really lead to finger pointing all the time. Everybody says, I, I don't have a problem. And, and to be honest, there is no problem with the database. You know, so if the database guy is monitoring the database, they're gonna say, well, there is nothing wrong with the database. It's performing well, and it is performing well. There is no issue with the database. It's the one SQL, which is the problem. So what we see in the industry is with the silo based monitoring, different people have to jump on a call and they're trying to do the root cause analysis with five different administrators. And they're all basically saying, everything is hunky dory at my end. That's where the end to end monitoring comes in picture. It's extremely valuable to have a single tool doing end to end monitoring and be able to identify the root cause as and when it occurs in the very first occurrence of the problem. So what we did here is, is very similar to what an individual does or an expert does. Even when I was at, when, when I'm do, doing root cause analysis for a customer, I would have learned about how the transaction behaves, how their application behaves, what is normal and what is not normal for an application. But it is very difficult for an individual to do it because learning every transaction, learning every application um, and how it performs at a certain time is just a nightmare. And why do it when we can be more efficient with the with the tooling? So that's where Applicator comes in picture. And it learned every transaction which went through the system soon after Ag Applicator Agent was deployed on this pet store application. And it built the baseline. And based on that baseline, Applicator is able to identify where there is a problem. So here we um, we saw that 55 milliseconds, here we saw 64, 642 milliseconds. Now let me drill down into this. When I drill down into the details, right there, I see that 89% um, of the time went into this SQL. So just in a matter of like three clicks, I'm able to go from an enterprise view down to the, um, to the view where I have identified the exact SQL which is causing the problem. And keep in mind, this is all adaptive monitoring. So you're not doing any changes to the monitoring and you will see that very shortly. You'll do this yourself in the labs. Um, so here, Applicare looked at this get special requirements method. It realized that it's taking 581 milliseconds. It's not normal. And Applicare captured all the details and here we have the exact root cause. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the other transaction too. I'm gonna pull up the good one. So now we have uh, traffic coming from, uh, from various different places, different parts of the world. So I'm able to see uh, where the requests are coming, different cities. So now let's go into the details of this, the good transaction. And the only reason why we are keeping these details for the good transaction is just to be able to demonstrate the capability to you guys. You don't have to keep uh, in Applicare, you don't have to keep the uh, the tracing information and, and details for, for all the transactions which are good. Right there, 
you made you can make a huge performance impact on the positive impact by only monitoring the bad guys by default when you deploy applicant in an environment it'll have the configuration that we will only capture the the transactions when there is a when there is a problem with the the response time the slas are not met or there are errors and those kind of things so so we are automatically by default configured to capture only the bad guys and that's how we are able to keep the overhead extremely low so say out of the million transactions which occurred only two transactions had problems and we were able to identify that problem those problem transactions at runtime in real time and we only captured the data for those two firstly we eliminated all the you know the bean counting you'll have to do otherwise to go through the million transactions try to find all that and filling up your monitoring databases with unnecessary data and all that ultimately leads to the overhead so by having smart monitoring we call it intelli tracing and intelli sense by having this intelli sense in the product we are able to cut down the overhead significantly so this get special requirements method only took 70 i guess nanoseconds here uh, or 70 microseconds significantly little time and applicator only captured a little detail in that it did not capture in many cases it wouldn't capture anything at all in this but here this same method took a different time 581 milliseconds and applicator captured all the details which were necessary to get to the root cause so the monitoring is constantly changing it's not static monitoring and that's where the difference lies in manual monitoring versus automated monitoring applicator is able to make this decision in real time in nanoseconds that do i need to keep this data or not keep the data and automatically capture only the wrong only the faulty transactions and that's what makes the whole difference so you can very simply go in applicator and configure hey i only want to see i only want to see um slow transactions i only want to see failed transactions or i want to see the when the slas when my slas are not met so you can define your own slas or you can depend on applicator to automatically build the baseline and tag the transactions which don't meet the which exceeds the baseline so you don't have to define the slas although you can and you can have a you can have comparison between the we can flag the transactions when the slas are not met or when the baselines are uh, breached so it's extremely easy to configure if i want to keep the successful transactions if you have a need for capturing every transaction details or what level of transaction details you want to keep you can very easily configure that um, configure that in applicator by default we have we configure it to um, to only capture the the faulty transactions but for demo we have done um, something different here and we are capturing the details on the even the good ones so we got the user experience i mean now we can compare how the page load times are from you know different parts of the world so i'm seeing in us we are spending more time on the network actually this picture looks quite different india is faster in this particular case but the whole point is by having this information accessible we are able to make decisions on where the problem lies in the application. Is it the network which is at fault? Is it the database which is causing the problem? Is it the users 
machines which are having the issue and so on. So we are able to very clearly see the picture that the last 15 minutes, uh, how is the performance for this application or for any duration of time. And then we can identify where the issue lies. So that's that's um, a real quick demonstration of the transactions monitoring in AppliCare. Now we are capturing a lot of other data. We are capturing. Um, so see here we are. I, I do want to show this. You guys did some transactions from different parts of the world. So now we are able to see some transactions coming from Hyderabad, some transactions coming from Delhi. Um, so we are able to see the timing for each transaction. We are able to see what location it is coming from. And in AppliCare, we are able to build this database for IP translation. We, we are able to build the custom database for IP translation. What that means is in an enterprise, you guys can configure, say you're working with MX and there are offices around the globe. You can configure, hey, here is my New Delhi office. Here is my Hyderabad office. Here is my Virginia office. Uh, with the IP range, you can specify what IP range is, belongs to what office. And we are able to identify that this transaction is coming from, from New Delhi office of MX and so on. So you, you are able to narrow it down to not only just the city, you're able to narrow it down to the, you know, to the even user. So you will see exactly, you can pull up the information about, um, about the user. If the person has logged in, we are able to pull any information from HTTP session and any variables which were passed uh, to the transaction. So we have information about right now, we just passed the product ID in this application and there is no user information, but if there was a user information attached to this transaction, which 99.9% .9 of the time in a real application, um, that would be the case. We'll see the user ID for the person who did that transaction or who had that issue. That way you can, uh, your company can proactively make the calls to the user that we know your issue rather than the customer calling in and and the help desk is trying to figure out what happened, we are able to change the game completely. We are able to make things proactive. And talking about making things proactive, we are able to identify the patterns very early on. So when something becomes extremely efficient and a machine is doing it rather than an expert has to sit and do it, we are able to identify things in very early on. So say for example, uh, we're gonna cause a, a connection leak in this application. Okay, so this is this is where, just don't do this transaction because otherwise it's gonna kill the environment. So here I caused a connection leak. This is a coding issue. Somebody took the connection but forgot to give it back. Uh, what it's going to do is uh, right now the application would continue to work fine. The, the problem has occurred in the background, but application is still working fine. If we do it a few times, we're going to run out of connections. Ultimately, an application is going to just die. It's going to not be able to talk to the database. So these kind of problems, if we identify it early on, we will be able to address it early on. So AppliCare would identify this automatically behind the scenes. We'll see an alert coming in in about another minute here, and we'll be able to see that there is a connection leak in the in the application. So here, I'm gonna go look at the last 15 minutes data now, and I'm gonna go look at the data sources. So here, I'm monitoring the data source and the connection pool there for the pet store and see here, mostly there was one idle connection and everything was active connections were pretty much zero. Now, when I go at this point onwards, the number of active connections have constantly gone to one. That's a leaked connection. Generally, the application takes the connection, does its work, give it back and it's done. So 
everything stays available in the pool because it's very quick. But here, now we have already started noticing that there is a problem and one connection is acquired and never given back. So I'm starting to see the problem because I went and looked for this data source monitor, but I shouldn't be looking at this. And that's where the alert would come in picture. Within a minute, I would see that alert here for the connection pool, uh, the connection has been leaked. So we'll wait for that, that alert to come in, uh, in here. But early detection really helps prevent the bigger problems. And knowing this early on, I know there is a issue with this connection pool. I can mitigate that. I can um, get that addressed ASAP before a bigger problem occurs. This is a fairly simple example. You know, this is just to show things happen. In production, you would not see these simple cases, but I'm sure you're going to see uh, fairly complex cases. We also have, uh, we have seen examples where a particular network card is not behaving on a machine and dropping the packets. Now, the impact of that would be the packets will need to be resent and the network is going to self-correct itself but it's going to add time to the to the transaction so transactions will start to get slow at a certain uh, on a certain machine and identifying that why they are becoming slow is really difficult because if you don't have adaptive monitoring what are the chances that you're going to be doing the constant monitoring of packets getting dropped so that's where we come in picture we have identified these patterns as problem patterns, and we built hundreds of these problem patterns in AppliCare, and we are constantly enhancing that database behind the scenes. So any pattern which we have come across with many, many years of our company-wide experience, we built those in AppliCare, and it automatically detects those patterns. Say, for example, one issue showed up at MTN in South Africa, and it's a technical issue which they shared with us, we will be able to put together the problem, that pattern detection in AppliCare. So if Verizon is, is running AppliCare here in US and or OI Telecom is running it in, in Brazil, they'll be able to proactively detect that pattern which exists in their environment, but they haven't encountered it yet. So by having this knowledge sharing from different, from around the globe, and we're not taking any data from, um, from your environment or from customers' environments without their permission. So there is, you can install AppliCare in your environment. You can keep it on-prem. You don't have to share, nothing travels to us. So we're not doing anything which is you know, taking the information, proprietary information or anything like that. Um, we are taking the data from the news groups, we are taking the data from the industry, and we are building the patterns in AppliCare to proactively detect problems rather than having an outage and then starting the, the whole root cause analysis process. I'm just curious, how many of you guys are proactively doing problem detection in your companies and how many of them, how many of you are still facing issues where the root cause analysis is done afterwards? I think it should be a poll, but if you want to put something in the chat, feel free to, um, yeah, feel free to put that in the chat. I would love to hear from you uh, how the state of the environment is for you guys. So, okay, so now, um, okay, I'm waiting for that alert to show up. It should be, um, see, we only mark a connection leaked as leaked only after a certain period of time, because you may have 
an application which is doing some extensive processing. So it's so we do have some thresholds which need to be met before we mark it as a leak connection. So there is always a delicate balance between hyper detection versus the, the right detection. If we send you too many alerts, you're going to start ignoring the alerts. And if we send you too little alerts, yeah, obviously we're missing out on the problems. So there is a delicate balance in um, on what to alert and and when to alert. And that is where our experience comes in picture. So as I was mentioning to you, um, we have these patterns in the product. So 90% of the alerts in AppliCare are pre-configured. You don't really need to, you don't need to configure alerts once you deploy AppliCare, it'll automatically uh, detect the patterns where there is a problem rather than requiring an administrator to do those configurations. Because generally what we have seen in the industry is the admins who are managing these applications may not have, you know, maybe a few years of experience or very little experience when they are starting to do the monitoring. We can't ask them to configure the alerts because if the alert is not configured correctly, it's going to cause more problems than benefit. Excessive monitoring would make you ignore it completely and too little is a problem. So that is why our experience and having that built into AppliCare really makes the difference. So all these patterns which I talked about, um, you know, like having this slow SQL detection, you know, this particular, um, a particular transaction was slow um, and there was a particular SQL which was slow. So AppliCare would automatically send you an alert with this transaction was slow from this particular IP and here are the details. And you can also send those details from right here, you can email it to the, say you needed to send it to the developer. You can just send it from here. You can email it to whoever, you can put your description along with it. So you can just send any piece of information from AppliCare over to the over to the other teams for, for them to review. Any questions so far in the chat? Let me just quickly review that. Oh, looks like we're doing pretty good here. No questions so far. Yeah, feel free to put in any questions you have as I'm covering uh, different aspects of the application. So, so here we have um, we have gone through the user experience monitoring. We have looked at different pieces of. Um, how your database is performing, how your app server is performing, how your network is performing, and so on. And now I'm going to show you two more things and then we'll get into the configuration and and the deployment of AppliCare. I started getting some questions on how to deploy AppliCare, how to configure any application. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next few minutes. So, Okay, so we looked at it from user experience standpoint. We can we can get extensive information with respect to with respect to what is the what are the browsers which are being used by the application, what OSs are coming in picture. So we have, wow, we are seeing some requests coming in from Linux. That's pretty interesting. Um, so I'm I'm starting to see some really good questions coming in, and I'll get to them very shortly. Uh, thanks for thanks for participating here. I'm glad to see um, everybody is there and and the questions are very valuable. We'll get to them very shortly. So, in the user experience monitoring, we are we are looking at we are providing a lot of analytical data with respect to 
what servers the calls are going to, what OSs the users are using, um, what browsers are coming in picture, uh, how many repeat visitors, how many um, new visitors, you know, what are the total visits? So we, we start to get a lot of Google Analytics data from AppliCare. The difference here is compared to Google Analytics is that you get the very, only the high level picture from Google Analytics. But here in AppliCare, we are not only giving you the high level picture, but at the same time, we are able to get down to the nitty gritty details. We are able to identify individual transactions. So you get complete picture um, on the, where the traffic is coming from, what servers it's going to, how an individual's performance is or how a region's performance is and how a server's performance is. And the biggest thing is when the performance is not good or when there are problems, why those problems occur. So that's that's the biggest thing uh, which you get with, with AppliCare. So we got the data from analytics. Um, if we identify that there is a problem with a particular server, we can get into the details of that particular server. We can get into the details of a particular node. Um, we can drill down into, you know, where the, how is the memory utilization, CPU utilization. We can look at it from various different angles. So here I'm looking at it from OS perspective. I can look at it from app server perspective. So how many threads are busy in an app server? Am I, are things queuing up? Um, is how is the response time over a period of time from the app server? So I'm able to see all those details and do keep in mind for all these dashboards are pre-configured in AppliCare. So you're not configuring, you, you don't have to pick and choose what to, what to look at, what to monitor. All you are doing is you are deploying the agent and we will do that very shortly. So here we are able to look at, you know, what processes are running in the environment, who's consuming the, the um, CPU, who's consuming the resources in the environment, uh, how is your disk utilization at any point of time, um, how are your network connections performing, who's talking to who, and what state those connections are in. So we are able to see patterns like, hey, I was trying to talk to a bank for getting the credit card authorization and things are slow at the bank because of the Thanksgiving, you know, they're getting bombarded. They're not able to catch up with the load. And our company transactions are getting slowed because of that reason. So we will clearly see all the connections held up on a particular IP DNS to a particular location. So we'll be able to very quickly identify that, hey, we are having problem with this particular service. This is one way to identify. Every problem you can identify many different ways. You can identify um, a service slow from an external service call in AppliCare. You're gonna be able to drill down into the service details and you'll be able to identify the service but at the same time, you're also able to see it from, from network connections perspective, that all my connections are getting tied up to the bank. And that's what is causing me to, uh, to run out of connections on my side and have an outage on my end too. So those kind of problems can, we have seen them in, in real applications in, the envi in real environments. And that's why we built all these things in the product. So we are able to look at the data from various different angles and kind of tie everything together to solidify the root cause analysis. So here, okay, we got to the uh, this connection leak which we had caused earlier and we are seeing the alert here. So let's look at this alert and now we have all the information which we needed, we are seeing that there is a connection leak which occurred on this particular server at this particular time. 
And here, here are all the details. So I'm able to see um, that this method gets special requirements. It gets a special treatment from us. We have caused all the problems in that particular method. Um, so here, this guy acquires a connection when we go to when we go to the koi fish and never gives it back. So now you have the complete stack trace and your development team can immediately fix the problem. Deploying, it's, so it's extremely easy to identify. This is all self-detection. You, you did not have to, you don't have to configure these alerts. You don't have to configure um, that I, I want to do the, you don't even have to know there is something like a connection leak because many administrators may not know, you know, this is more of a development time thing. So if the administrator doesn't know, what are the chances they'll put the alert? So that's why having this alert in Applicare pre-built into Applicare really helps that as and when those problems occur, you will get the alert. So this gives us the complete picture of uh, why that problem occurred. We are monitoring things from various different angles. We can look at it from, hey, how's the heap performing? We, I don't know if we have configured garbage collection for this, we haven't. Uh, you can look at it from garbage collection perspective. Um, the, the thread dump is an important, um, oh, sorry, I was trying to print. So here, I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna request a thread dump on this. But what happens in the, I'm sure you guys are dealing with the thread dumps in your, when you're monitoring applications, whenever there is a slow thread, stuck thread, Applicare would automatically take a snapshot of that. It'll automatically analyze that snapshot and will send you an alert that just like the connection leak alert, any slowness in the application, Applicare would automatically send you alert. It'll have complete information on which thread is slow, what transaction it is doing, and then we have the complete trace of that transaction uh, to be able to tie everything together. So you see the extent of the problem, how many threads are slow, how many threads are getting tied up. So this is happening asynchronously behind the scene. So we just, when we request this, uh, when we request this uh, thread dump, we are sending that information asynchronously to the, to the agent. So it does take a few, um seconds for this i think there is going to be about a 30 seconds delay before you actually see the information but in 99 percent of the cases you wouldn't be requesting a thread dump what you would what would happen in a real scenario is that applicator would automatically identify that there is a issue behind the scenes and it'll it'll generate the It'll capture the information about the threads. It'll send that email out to you and you'll have the complete visibility here in, hey, what is happening? What is that thread stuck on? So, so you will have um, this screen would have this entry automatically generated and you don't need to go through the log files. You don't need to capture the uh, the thread dumps at the right time. The biggest problem with the the manual monitoring is the timing. You know, if the thread dump is taken too early, you wouldn't see the problem. If it is taken too late, the problem is already gone. So when the problem is occurring, somebody needs to generate those dumps. And many times, and you need to have multiple of them to be able to match, you know, did the thread move or it did not move? So that's where having those processes completely automated behind the scenes really help. So you don't need to do any of that manual stuff. Anytime there is a slowness, you get an automatic alert with complete details. So there are a couple of questions coming in the chat here. No, Applicator is not just meant for Java. So we, we have 
using the one of the Java application for demonstration purposes here. But no, we have a broad coverage of different technologies and it's not just meant for uh, for Java. So that's one of the question which was there right at the bottom. How to deploy AppliCare, we'll, get, we'll do that very shortly. How to configure any application in metric so in AppliCare, we'll do that very shortly. Um, so um, let me read these uh, some of these questions. So talking about other monitoring tools, we'll we'll discuss that at the end. You know that will make that an interactive conversation. Love to hear your views on that too. Um, what are the counters we can monitor from here? So everything which you are seeing on the screen pretty much is pre-configured. So you're not picking and choosing one counter. Um, and that's one of the ben benefit of AppliCare that once you deploy it in your environment, we have built the dashboards for you. We have built, um, we, we know what to monitor and we have already put put together the package for you. So you get the complete picture right off the bat. You can build your own custom dashboards. You can create your own custom sensors um, but at the same time, you don't have to. Um, I see that it can show browser performance like page load time, the drill down of components and its size, etc. So we do have extensive information um, even in the browser performance, but we'll have to look at exactly what you're looking for there. Okay, let's start with the deployment. Can it be used for Power BI reports? I'll have to check on that. So, okay, types of apps monitored by AppliCare. So we we are not really tied to the type of apps. It doesn't have to be a, a web application or a uh, backend application, it can, we can monitor them all. Um, so we are a technology monitoring product and what you have built with that technology, it depends on, uh, it depends. So we have customers where we have online casinos monitoring their transactions, we have defense applications, we have medical applications. So we have uh, quite a lot of um, different type of applications which are being monitored by AppliCare. So we are a infrastructure monitoring tool. We are not a application type. Uh, we are a horizontal tool rather than a vertical tool. Let's put it this way. So, Talking about differences between different tools, what we'll do is we'll get to that at the end. So let me just walk you guys through the AppliCare first. Let's get some hands on on it. And some of you guys may also have experience with other tools. So we'll love to make that an interactive conversation. Love to hear from you how, how do you see AppliCare compared to the other tools and so on. Again, we will have to look uh, these individual, whether we are, you know, Power BI, Table U, we will have to look at, um, uh, I'll have to check on those things behind the scenes to, to see what all is supported and stuff. But as long as the, uh, a, one statement I do want to make in terms of the support is as long as, any application which is using the technologies which are supported by AppliCare. So say they're built on Java, they're built on .NET, they're built on Node.js and, and so on. They're using Apache, they're using um, Tomcat. Uh, so say SAP is leveraging Tomcat in the front end. They have the front end application built with, with Java. So yes, we can absolutely monitor that and get you some valuable information from uh, from SAP environment. And similarly for other 
vertical applications, as long as they are using a certain technology which we monitor, which we support, you will be able to get the uh, insight into the into the application. We'll, we'll, we are extremely cost effective. We'll work with you and yeah, I, I would pretty much say we're going to be significantly more cost effective than any other um, comparable monitoring tool. So let's get into, let's, uh, let me show you a few other things in the product and then we'll get to more questions from, from there. So we have, yeah, we went into the user experience. We can also do the synthetic monitoring. So many times you don't have, um, say your application only is utilized in the, in the daytime and at nighttime, there are no users on that application, but what if something goes wrong with that application? prior to the users coming in, you need to know that. And as and when the problems come, that way synthetic monitoring is uh, comes becomes extremely valuable. We are able to see with synthetic monitoring, what is, how is the application performing at any point of time by producing some artificial load. So, so we are able to produce the artificial load on the application say every 10 minutes, go go to the pet store, make sure you check it thoroughly that every transaction in the pet store is performing well. So I can go into the drill down here. Wait, I want to see. Um, okay, execution details here. Uh, let me see here. I can drill down into the details of that transaction. So yeah, I mean, every few, every so often we are sending this uh, this transaction. In the last 15 minutes, we have only sent it once. So if I go into a longer time period, yeah. So every every 10 minutes, we are sending an artificial transaction to the um, to the demo application, and we are keeping an eye on whether it was successful. Did it meet the SLA? And we are keeping other details on. Uh, how was the performance? If there are problems, Applicator would be able to generate an alert for you. So we are synthetically able to monitor your application or the client's applications. In this one, we can do more complex checks. We are not just doing a simple check where, hey, you're just going and creating a HTTP monitor, you can create extremely complex monitors where you can actually create a JMeter script. We use Apache JMeter behind the scenes for, uh, for this um, script building, which is a skill set which is easily available and a non-proprietary technology. Um, you can use the same scripts for load testing and so on and other user user acceptance testing and things. So you can put the user acceptance testing script in Applicator and have it run it every so often and generate alerts if the application did not meet the criteria at any point of time. So we can create different types of monitors with Applicator um, and that makes it extremely powerful by having the capability of uh, JMeter scripting. We pretty much open doors to everything which is possible with JMeter. And you can monitor database this databases. You can monitor web services. You can do a whole lot with JMeter, and that plugs right into Applicator. So we are able to do fairly complex transactions and able to do alerting on when problems are detected with any piece of the transaction. So you can have a complex script which goes through, it logs you in, it takes you into, um, it takes you into the um, JPET store, you look at a few items, you add them to the cart, and then you complete the checkout, you go to checkout and you complete the purchase. So the whole thing 
can be scripted and a synthetic monitor can be created when the when that monitor is run if there is a problem with a certain piece say checkout wasn't working or or a particular when i try to look for a particular item there was an issue applicator would send you the complete details in an email where with respect to hey this all worked from the script and this piece did not so you get the clear picture that what is how big is the problem what is the extent of the problem so you can make the right decision uh, is it how quick action it needs and so on you can also take actions from alerts so when the alerts fire you can automatically invoke different types of actions um, we, our customers have built extensive workflow around that and they are able to do a whole lot of self healing where by by invoking the actions so i can choose a particular um particular alert and i can choose different types of actions you know email is the standard action i can create different sna snapshots or i can run a command which is basically a script or a shell script and you can do anything in that shell script and you can run it on any machine where applicator agent is deployed so this also opens up extreme capabilities that when a certain alert is fired i want to expand the environment i want to you know be able to add more servers reduce more servers or or do certain things they say there is a disk space alert i i want to compress certain files i want to run a script which will compress the files ship them over to the archive and and the disk space alert is automatically taken care of so we can create extensive workflows in applicator so we can create these shell scripts and and these workflows in applicator where you can go ahead and tie them to the to the um alerts and do the do the self healing in the environments we'll not be able to get into the details of these things right now because of the the time which we have for this training but the whole point of this training is that you guys get the taste of what is possible from uh from using applicator in your environment and how to do the more effective troubleshooting but then you can go and look for more details uh at any point of time and and get into the you can go from there so we have we have help available in applicator where you can go and uh, say i wanted to look for remote commands i can go look for that and hey here i i have details on that and i can i can see uh what i can do with the remote commands and so on so, so what you can do, from here onwards you can take it after the training you can kind of play with the environment and you have a path to to learn from and we are always available to answer any questions you may have after that and reaching us is simple you can just send us an email at helpdesk at arcturustech.com it'll create a ticket for you so that you have a complete tracking of the ticket and and we can take it from there so we covered user experience monitoring we have covered synthetic monitoring so we somebody just asked me about what type of applications do we monitor we're not looking for just the we are not just monitoring the user experience transactions or we are looking at transactions behind the scenes whether it is a jms transaction it is a sql transaction or it's a web service or a microservice there are we are we are monitoring the infrastructure we are monitoring the technologies like java dot net node js and and within those technologies whatever you are doing or your customers are doing we are capturing those details 
so so this sql is running so many times behind the scenes it's going to this particular database and we are able to we are monitoring how is the average response time at any point of time what is the load where all it is running and how is the performance on that server so this a transaction could be happening on multiple nodes when it is happening on multiple nodes this is the cumulative chart here we are able to see how is the overall performance of that transaction here we have individual server details and we are able to see that for this particular server we are seeing this is the kind of response time so with this dashboard you also get to see is my load balancing working when i have multiple servers am i going to be able to am i going to be able to do uh, is my load balancing working am i getting the equal number of pages or transactions happening on different nodes so i, I see here 25 requests in the last one hour um, and here 36.5 milliseconds is my response time average response time so i can compare different nodes how is the performance of them you know how is the performance of each uh, container or or a vm so whatever happens to be running those transactions you will get the complete details on those and then i can drill down into those details and i can go into individual in individual request details so whether i have a user experience or i don't have a user experience i'm able to monitor the infrastructure transactions behind the scenes and i get the complete picture we are also keeping an eye on you know the key business transactions um what are the key business transactions how they are performing how many of them are coming in at any point of time so every business have some transactions which they um which are more important than the others so say for example in this application uh, checkout i mean i want to keep a track of uh, how many people went to the checkout how many people actually had issues with the checkout and and so on and then i may also want to know how many logins are occurring at any point of time so these are my key business transactions and what i can do here in applicator is i can just quickly go and create let me go here i'm going to go into http and i'm going to go and see add to cart oh here new order form so i want to add it as a key business transaction so new order form anybody who creates a new order i can just go ahead and create it as a as a key business transaction i can define it what application it is for so that way this helps with we are not looking for those transactions in other applications so this narrows the scope of the transaction so in the pet store application um i want to see this new order form but at the same time there is an inventory management applications behind the scenes i don't really care about the new order form there so that way i can i can manage the scope of the application uh, scope of the transaction from uh by choosing these uh parameters and i can just give it a name and save and i have created a um a key business transaction let me just call it new order form okay so that's it i'm going to just save this and here i have created a new uh new kbt and from here onwards applicator would start monitoring more details about a key business transaction so keep in mind every transaction we are capturing this high level data we are keeping this data with respect to um how is the performance at any point of time how many hits are coming in at any point of time and if there are error, errors at any point of time so this information is captured for pretty much everything which flows through the system but then having those individual transaction details okay how many times i want to look up that view item which uh, view item transaction which occurred at this particular time from a particular user to get that detail i need to create a key business transaction because 
yeah we are we are by default not monitoring unless there is a problem with a particular transaction if there is a problem with a particular transaction then applicator would capture that the intellisense and intellitrace would come in picture it'll automatically capture the the trace for that transaction and you will have that information but if i wanted every single transaction on this view item captured i can create a kbt and i i start getting those in, those pieces of information on the kbts so here i see that view item transaction it's in good state right now uh, there are no errors i can go into the they are these transactions are occurring on this node i can get into the individual details and here i have captured all the captured the details not only a line item but the trace for every single view item transaction that occurred and i can see if it was a success if there was any error we would see that here did it meet the slas we know that from here did it meet the the speed requirements speed thresholds which are built automatically by applicator we we see that here so here by seeing these green check marks i'm able to see that this transaction was a successful transaction i may want to capture the details i may not want to capture the details and that's up to you to choose and you can configure the things appropriately um like we we give you the choice either way okay so that's on the business transactions monitoring and reporting is pretty much everywhere in applicator you can uh, you can click on the print button here you can choose what you know what you see on the screen you can hey i want to pick up for jpet store application show me all the failed transactions uh, over a period of last one hour and i want the report in a certain format so you can generate those reports and not only you can generate these reports you can also schedule these reports so i'm not going to do this one here i'm going to go into the this report here i can just pick any report so say I wanted to look at the synthetic user experience report uh, for the last three hours, and I want to send it, or actually I want to do it for last one day, um, and I want to send it every morning to to me. So here I'm going to just say Deepak at actresstech.com, and I'm going to put my description, and this should be on a uh, every weekday. I mean, I, on a every week, uh, every day of the week, you know, generated at 9 a.m. So I am going to say that at 9 a.m., send me the synthetic user experience report to this particular email. That way, I don't have to keep an eye on the on the dashboard even. I can just have these reports come to me every morning. And I love this part that I'm able to get the picture. Hey, how's my application performing um, around the different cities, around different parts of the world? So we can get the transaction stats by city. We can get the synthetic user experience report. So we have built many of these reports. We have pre-built in the application. So any of the screens you saw pretty much as of now, there's a report available for those screens. So you can get that data emailed to you at a scheduled time in your inbox. So you don't even have to log in into Applicare console or constantly watching it to see um, what is going on there. Okay, let me look at the questions real quick. I haven't been keeping an eye on that. Okay, we'll we'll talk about the differences uh, between Dynatrace and App Dynamics and um, and Applicare. So one of the difference. Um, is that you don't have to set the thresholds in applicator at all you can we are not asking hey capture the transaction details if if the threshold goes beyond a certain time so th there may be a lot of similarities between the products we probably have 80 percent overlap between different monitoring products or maybe more than 80 percent overlap but still there are subtle differences under the hood the user experience is a key one that what we take a huge pride in is that 
in a matter of three clicks, we are able to get you to the root cause of the problem. Like I went into this um, in these examples that how quickly we are able to identify, you know, the problem transactions um, in, in a matter of like three clicks, we were able to identify, hey, there is a problem with this particular transaction. It is happening in the, in the database. So ease of use is one of the key differentiators of AppliCare that extremely quick to learn. And I would love for you to give us feedback afterwards, how easy for, how easy it is for you to learn AppliCare, how comfortable you found it after the, at the end of the training, we'll actually do, do a survey on that. Love to get your feedback on that. But we find, we believe that we are able to identify um you know the problems very very quickly and get you from a big picture view to a uh, to a drill down view where you can solve the problems or you can pass it on to the right people to solve the problems extremely efficiently so in a matter of um three clicks i'm able to get to the bottom of the bottom of the problem okay so Hello. Let's hold off on your questions right now. We will open them up uh, on more conversations at the end of the end of the meeting. So yeah, please keep your microphones muted right now, and you can use the chat to uh, put more questions. Okay, so now. Let me go and cover a few more things. We talked about alertings already. Um, we have extensive performance comparison capabilities so that you can see how was the how was the performance from my yesterday's version. So last night we we put a new version in. It was working well. Yesterday, is it working better today? I want to compare that. And I want to be able to uh, see the performance differences, however little they are. So we can compare in AppliCare, we can compare the, ouch. So we can compare the time periods. I can see my, hey, how was my performance on 17th at the same time period versus how is my performance today? So I can just go ahead and do the, um, comparison there. So this is how it looked. I mean, fairly similar, but I have more details as the problems start to develop. These pictures will change. Um, so we can do comparison. We can compare what I want to monitor, what I want to compare. Say, I want to see the CPU utilization. How was the CPU utilization different with my previous version of application versus today? I want to add the average response time. How was it different? I want to add throughput. I want to look at the heap at the same time. I want to look at the processes. So I can look at it from various different angles. You know, um, so we have extensive comparison capability. We can look at it from different servers perspective. So we can look at different servers. Hey, I want to do uh, I want to look at these properties on a particular server, or I want to compare a certain property on different servers. So you can do comparative analysis from, from various different angles. We can look at the, what transaction, how a particular transaction was behaving on 17th versus how a transaction is behaving today. So here we got, I'm looking at this particular transaction. There were 18 of those which occurred on 17th and there are uh, 20, let me see, this is the same one. And here are 22 of them and nine milliseconds on, in, on the 17th, here it is 10 milliseconds. But this is in the margin of error. So I don't see a huge difference, but I can compare different things to different transactions and as the behavior changes, this part becomes extremely valuable. We can see the comparison between key business transactions. So, hey, how many checkouts were there on 17th versus how many checkouts are today at, in, in this time period? So between 8 and 9 a.m., 
we we are able to look at the performance or there were no no such transactions on uh at, on either day so we are able to see those things we can compare errors you know were there errors coming and we can compare the we can compare the transaction flows so how my application looked like at that particular time period of time versus how it looks like today so we are able to see these comparisons so there is extensive performance comparison capabilities we do keep an eye on the availability of the applications so you can see when there was a slowness in the transaction when there was an issue with the availability of the transaction of the no, sorry not just transactions the servers nodes so we're keeping an eye on on those things anytime there are outages we have that information and you can also get these reports in your email box uh, availability reports um hey show me how my application performed over the last 24 hours so that way it comes in your email box the same report you will know if there is any maintenance which occurred on the application because we do keep track of maintenance time separately so there are blackouts you can create in application let me see if i can okay last one day or last two days i'm going to generate this report ouch Oh, it's not going to show you guys because I haven't shared that, but, but, um, anyways, um, you can generate the reports and we keep track of the maintenance times. So if there was a maintenance window scheduled from say eight to 10 in the evening, that wouldn't be considered a downtime because that's, that shouldn't affect your numbers. You know, that's a scheduled planned downtime where you are doing an upgrade on the application or you're doing something in the application. So applicator would automatically account for that. It will not send you the alerts during those, during those blackout windows. It will, when it's generating reports, it will not show that as an outage. It will show that as a blackout time so that the management sees there was actually a maintenance window and not an outage and so on. So we have extensive monitoring of availability there we have logs monitoring built into applicator 2 so one of the key things with applicator is there's a single agent you deploy you are not doing um you know there's no separate agent for logs monitoring there is no separate agent for infrastructure monitoring there's no separate agent for uh, for applications monitoring so you're deploying a single agent and all those capabilities are tightly integrated. So I wanted to look at, you know, these are the, the logs. I want to say, I want to identify any errors which have come in the, in the logs. And here I'm able to identify, I'm able to pull up all the errors. The moment you deploy an agent on the, on a machine, there are certain logs we will start monitoring but you can add other logs you can configure um, the logs monitoring and you can point it to your custom logs or your uh, system logs and so on so so you can configure that it's extremely easy it takes just a matter of pretty much like seconds to so say i wanted to monitor uh, errors and i wanted to get an alert on that error i can just simply say add an alert but this is a fairly simple scenario. This is the simplest case. You can create complex scenarios here um, and you can build the patterns. Um, I'm trying to recollect the, what we use for, um, for those patterns building. There's a technology we use behind the scenes. That's an open standard. So you can build a complex pattern here. You can set up the alerts on those on those complex patterns and an applicator would alert you as and when those situations occur. So extremely easy to use logs monitoring. Configuration of logs monitoring is extremely simple to, hey, I wanna, on this particular node, 
this particular po uh, log I want to monitor. And there are some logs where you may need to build a custom regex pattern to monitor. There are there are quite a few logs which we monitor by default, but some may not be in compliance with the patterns which we recognize. So you can build your own custom regex patterns and add them to Applicare. Uh, one of the thing which we have added for based on the customer requests is that we can start monitoring the logs from the current time onwards. So we have gone to the customers where they have, hey, we have this logs directory where we have some logs sitting which we want to keep, but there are two gigabytes or three gigabytes of logs sitting in there and we really don't want to monitor and alert on those existing logs, but we want to do it from current time onwards. So you can pick and choose. Do you want to monitor from current time onwards or you want to monitor, index the whole log? You can add a watcher to the directory. So I want to do the, you know, slash applicator slash logs directory. I want to put a watcher on it. Anything which shows up in that directory, I want to be uh, monitoring or indexing that and, and alerting being I should be alerted on certain conditions so we can we can do those things with the with the logs monitoring um we have done the configuration of this logs monitoring via files for the customers so they can upload their file and we have an FAQ on this where we guide your customers on how to configure this, how to create this file. That way they can just say on every, the, the name of the system, these directories to monitor, and you they can just upload that file to Applicare and Applicare would start monitoring all those in one go. So you don't have to go individually and monitor every single, what directory to monitor, what logs to monitor. Um, you maintain a file of that, you upload that file to Applicare and Applicare would be able to do all of that in a batch mode and you have your whole logs monitoring up and running in no time. So that's, um, that's about logs monitoring, but overall extremely simple, a single agent to, to, to deploy and manage. So you don't have to worry about, you know, different tools being deployed and so on. We have extensive reporting. I already talked about it. Uh, we talked about the comparison. This is a special dashboard which we have built for some customers um, where you can do the, you can keep an eye on the, on the, you know, CPU utilizations and memory TCPs, server availabilities in a single dashboard for different servers. So this was one of the customers request. We do have extensive AWS monitoring, Kubernetes monitoring. We don't have those configured here, and I don't know how much of that we'll be able to cover in this, but but we'll be we'll be getting to that in the. I guess you can look at that in our documentation and and learn some of that. And I'll see if I have time. We'll we'll cover that. I, I see many questions are coming on the deployment itself how the deployment is done. And so let's get to that real quick now. So the deployment is extremely simple. We're gonna do, um, we're gonna download the agent from Applicare controller and install it on our machines. And what we'll do is we'll take a quick break at this point. We'll take a 10 minutes break or a 15 minutes break at this point and and then we'll reconvene to uh, do get into the labs. You guys can you're more than welcome to put any questions you have in the chat. I'll review the questions in the more questions in the meantime if any other comes, and we'll get into the hands-on part where I'm gonna actually do a quick deployment in front of you guys, and then we can you guys can do the same thing and we'll play with the environment. So you will build pretty much a similar environment where you, you will have access to this application and 
you will deploy the agent on it and and you will start monitoring in applicator console so we'll meet time right now is 9 14 here in us so we'll reconvene at um, at 9 30. so in about 16 minutes um so i'm gonna put that in the chat So I'll talk to you guys soon.
Hello, everyone. Just give me one minute here. I'll share the lab exercises and we'll take it from there. So I just changed the dimensions of the screen here. Uh, is it clear for you guys? Just if uh, one of you can, uh, one or two of you can put that in the chat, please. Okay, good. So that's that's wonderful. <clears throat> So we'll we'll get into the. So are we good to start? Um, let me see. We have a good number of people here. So I'm assuming everybody is back from a little break um, and ready to ready to move forward. Okay, so let's get into the into the lab exercises. Thank you for you know, sharing your email information yesterday. We have already, you, you are already registered on our, on our support site that on our site, that way we have given you access to the, to the application already. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to get into the, I'm going to get into the, let me go real quick here. I'm going to go into this. And I'll share. Uh, you you already have. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna first do the lab myself. You guys watch me do it. It should be fairly straightforward, and then you guys can try it of your own. And we are here to to help you. We'll be on standby. So. I'm doing a fairly simple thing here. I'm going to go to the sas.applicator.co and did it go down? Okay. And I'm going to go log in into that with the ID, which I registered yesterday. So once I log in, I'm going to get to this dashboard. Um, and at this point, there is nothing configured in this dashboard. So this is my my empty applicator console and I am ready to download the agent and I'm ready to download the sample application and I'm going to deploy that into an environment. So what I'll do, I'll go to one of the environments here. I'll get into this. I'll go to a, a virtual environment here to another, I'm logging into another PC. Ouch. Sorry about this. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go to the sas.applicator.co here. Let's log in with Deepak. Need this, I don't need that right now. And I'm gonna first go and download. So I'll go into this download agent. So I'm gonna download two things from here. Number one, I'll download a sample application from here. Okay, so this sample application. So here um, I downloaded the sample application and also I'll download the single agent for Windows because I'm doing this on, on Windows right now. Um, I'm assuming most of you guys are using Windows. Anybody using other operating systems uh, yeah, please put them in the chat. Um, we don't have any preferences 
but what we have seen generally in the trainings is most people are using windows so we decided to do it on on the windows platform so i i have i have downloaded the the application i am going to download the single agent here from the sas environment Okay, so once I have these things downloaded, it's getting downloaded as we speak. I'm gonna go here and I'll go into the downloads directory. And here I have my, my downloads. Okay, um, it should be completed in a minute. So I have completed these two downloads. And what I'll do is I'll go into the C drive and I'm gonna just make sure there is nothing, there's already a, these things are installed. I'm going to just make a backup of this. I'll just call it a back. Oh, wait, there's already a backup. I'll call it back. Okay. Um, okay, so something is running here. Let me stop those things which is running. Let me close things here. Okay, so now let's see here. Okay, so I'm able to do that. And similarly, I don't have any, up. okay, now this is done. Um, and I'm gonna go in the downloads and extract this application, which I just, um, Okay, so I'm going to just extract it here. Uh oh, I did the wrong thing. I didn't want to extract it. Uh, okay. Okay, I want to extract it to this. Okay, and I'm going to move this to my C drive. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Extract it to this, and I'm gonna move that to the C drive, to the root directory. So we have kept it fairly simple, you know, because everybody has generally a C drive. So this is pretty much drive agnostic, but just for the sake of the training, we're keeping it extremely simple. So we downloaded this Tomcat application, which is, which is the the same JPET store which we were looking at. And we also have single agent here. Let me go. Okay, so this one. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna make the previous one the backup here, the DB, and I'll make this the okay. So I'm gonna open a new Okay, open in a new window here, and I'll keep this open in a new window here. And I don't need this anymore. Okay, so I got my uh, single agent here. I got my Tomcat here. Um, so, so now this Tomcat is just for the, this is a sample application. We have, we have, deployed the application on it the pet store application it's in it's in the folder here um the jpet store war and we're going to just monitor this with applicare now the deployment of applicare is uh, there are two ways to do the deployment one is we can just do the the wrapper which is basically we can just run a install of our wrapper and that way, everything which comes on this machine um, would, every Java process which comes on would automatically be instrumented and automatically be monitored by Applicare. But I'm just gonna, just for the sake of showing it to you guys, I'm gonna take a little, uh, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna do the, uh, a different way of installing Applicare. So here, what we'll do is in this Catalina dot, it's, it, 
the bat file, which is the startup file of of the Tomcat, we can add one line for um, for AppliCare to be added to it. So we're gonna just we we did these steps. We downloaded all the we down we went to the download agents. Uh, we downloaded the the demo application. We have downloaded the single agent. What we'll do, we have extracted. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this uh, one line into the into the Tomcat startup file, and and that'll automatically inject um, AppliCare into the into that Tomcat. And if I had taken the wrapper, I mean, if we have time, we will go into the wrapper at the end of the training too. Uh, but I just wanted to show you uh, this piece that we can do it either this way or we can just configure the agent to uh, to automatically inject itself anytime there is a there is a uh, need for it for a new process which comes up. So this is about the deployment at this point we have let me just summarize it real quick i have downloaded the applicator single agent onto this machine and installed that into this uh, into this uh, demo jpet store application and now i'm going to just start the demo application and right now remember we don't have anything our our environment applicator controller has nothing deployed at this point so there is no no agent there it's a clean uh, shell environment so let's go into i'm going to open a command prompt here and i'll open it in the administrative mode to run the and i'm going to run this Okay, and I'm gonna just start the start the Tomcat environment. We use it uses Derby behind the scenes, and there is a little bug which we are still uh, working with. I mean, in this environment, it showed up at the last minute, so uh, bear with me for a minute. Um, I'll point to that. But that's just a bug in this environment right now. So the applicator agent is starting. So when applicator starts, you will see that here. And within a minute, it should automatically reflect in here that it should be added. Let me see. So it's already added. It's connected to the uh, environment. And we have started gathering uh, the data. So this was about the about the deployment of the uh, of the agent. So give it one more minute. When we start AppliCare agent, we we have a little delay built into AppliCare to start gathering the data because we want to make sure that your application gets the priority at the startup and there is no resources are consumed by anything else. So we are, we start our monitoring a few seconds. Um, we give it a few seconds before the monitoring actually starts. So here it's um, automatically connected. I'm just waiting for the data to start coming here. Let me make sure there was no, yeah, there is this, there's this bug which we have encountered at the last minute. We are addressing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just restart it right now. This should be addressed uh, sometimes today and hopefully, uh, you know, tomorrow or Monday when you use this environment, you shouldn't encounter this issue. So I am just, uh, what I did was I, after the deployment, I just restarted the, the sample application here. Agent should be starting.
Yeah, feel free to chat um, in any questions you have. Okay, so this is, now we're gathering data there. It should show data in about a few seconds here. Connected. We are starting to get the availability data. So it was not monitored, not monitored. It's not available. We got, um, so there's a distinct difference between distinct difference between not monitored and not available. So up until this point, we were not monitoring the environment and here we started monitoring, but it was not available. So there is a distinct difference there um, between the two. So let's, uh, okay, so the data started coming. Now pretty much I'm gonna come out of this Windows environment and I'm gonna go into the My Machine itself. So let's go into this and here, uh, we have, yeah, so we have data coming in uh, from from that agent. And as I said to you guys earlier, all these dashboards, you don't have to do, you don't have to do this for each uh, server or e these are automatically built. And now there are a couple of questions. I'm gonna answer those questions. Um, so the applicator was downloaded into the Tomcat server. No. Applicator was downloaded onto the machine. So the single agent was installed onto that Windows machine. There could be 10 Tomcats running on that machine and everyone would use the same agent. So there is no, right now I did a manual install, but you can have a, you can have a auto install, auto injection so that machine is configured. And I'll go into that at the, at the end of it. I'll show you guys so that you don't have to do anything in the Tomcat yourself or any other process which comes in, applicator would be automatically injected in that. In all servers, example, Asia app server, DB server, in order to monitor the matrix. No, you do not need to install. Again, I answered that question to, to some extent. Um, and we'll cover that with the wrapper, you don't need to do, you can have a single agent which will basically auto inject itself and monitor different instances which are coming up in the in the environment. And if we have time, we'll we'll do that. Uh, uh, we'll we'll test that out. We'll show that to you guys. Okay, so now we we have started monitoring uh, this information. We, we have injected a, um, we have added one agent to the environment. At this point, would you guys want to try that yourself before we get into the, the key business transactions? Let me hear some answers in the chat. Uh, or you want me to cover some more pieces? Would you want me to build the KBTs and other things and then you want to try that yourself? I'm open to suggestions here. Looks like very quiet audience at this point. How are we doing? Do we have some people here? I see a lot of people online. Okay, so, okay, uh, thanks Vidya for the response there. I mean, um, so we have, um, okay, so we, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and and do some more uh, transactions. I'll do some more exercises on this so you guys can see it. How am I doing it? And then you guys can, uh, can build your own environment. I do want to know if everybody is able to log in into their, into their environment. So uh, yeah, my, my question is, I, 
do me one favor, just go to the sas.applicator.co and make sure that you're able to log in into that, um, into that environment with your IDs. And if there are any issues, um, yeah, we will, you know, we can help you with those. Um, so you should be able to log in. You have a sandbox environment there and you should be able to download the agents and the demo application and all that so that you are ready to play with it. Okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is now I'll open another window here and I'm gonna go to that. Ouch, I didn't need to do that. I needed to do. Let me check what IP did I install it at? It's 8080, what port? 8080, okay. Let's make sure it's all working. It's all good. Okay, and now I'll come back to my machine. And I needed to do 8080. Okay. So I'm doing these, um, I'm just doing a few transactions on the application. Um, and those transactions are again monitored by Applicare. So we'll start seeing the data coming into Applicare in, in about in few seconds here. So the way Applicare works is um, every, I believe every 15 seconds, this data is dispatched by the agent to the Applicare controllers or the collectors. And then that data is persisted at the data, in the database um, by, by Applicare. So, there is going to be a 15 second delay uh, before the data starts showing up in your um, in your dashboard. I mean, so that's just how uh, Applicare works. And in terms of uh, talking about scalability uh, behind the scenes, you know, we have an extremely scalable platform where we have various collectors and and. different uh, collectors and um, data persisters. So it's an extremely scalable platform, uh, whether you are doing an on-prem deployment or you are doing a, um, you know, SaaS environment. So either way, it's a highly scalable platform. So now we have started getting the, getting the data here on the, on the screen and I'm seeing what transactions are coming in into the system. As I said, at this point, there are no, no KBTs created in the environment. There are no, it's a clean environment. This is, this is the, these are the dashboards which you get by default. So I haven't done anything different other than just um, install the, just downloaded the single agent and, and that's pretty much it on the on the machine and configured it so um and i have started gathering the data into applicator from that point onwards now i am interested in say these are the transactions i am interested in i'm going to go ahead and make a kbt out of these so the view items i want to see how many people are going to the to the view item how frequently they are checking that um, that transaction and i'm just going to go ahead and say hey this view item for this particular server i, I want to see that and i can set up my slas if i want but right now i'm not going to worry about slas so all i needed to do to create a kbt is i just needed to convert that into you know i just needed to do this particular piece so uh, and similarly, I'll do that for, I, I'll add few more 
KBT is here. I'll just go into view category. And I have added that again for the same server. And I have saved, uh, saved that KBT. Um, so from this point onwards, once I, once I start, you know, I, I'll, I'll start to see, um, actually I, I should have been creating that from here. I can create them from different places. Oh, I didn't enable user experience monitoring. Let me do one, one more thing here. This is valuable for you guys to see. So by default, when we deploy the agent, we have monitored, we have enabled certain configuration, certain uh, monitoring. So what we have done is we have automatically enabled business transaction monitoring. We have monitored um, GMS message monitoring, web services, HTTP, uh, error codes, profiling, JDBC, logs, and SQL. So this is what we have automatically enabled to begin with. But say I wanted to enable the user experience monitoring in this application. So what I can do is I can just go there and I can just say, okay, I want to do the end user profiling. And all I needed to do is, all I need to do is just hit apply. That monitoring has been enabled now uh, within a matter of, so from this point onwards, within a matter of few seconds, all transactions which are happening on the application, they will have, um, they'll have the user experience monitoring or end user monitoring enabled on them. So, um, so I did some transactions here. Let me see if I get the data in the, so I have started getting the data in the user experience monitoring. So, so here we can see the request coming from, from Virginia now. So here the agent is running in my local environment. Keep that in mind. This is running in my my office. And this is, yeah, this is being monitored. So you may not be able to access this agent, but the data is getting collected in the in the applicator on the cloud. So applicator doesn't really care whether your application is running in the cloud, it's running in a hybrid mode, or it's running in a um in you know on-prem. Either way, so we, we once our monitoring is enabled on the applications or in the nodes um, or the containers, I mean, we are able to get all these details and we can build, you know, business transactions from there. So let's just go into this. I wanted to show you some more things here. Let me go into add to cart. Okay. So I've done some more transactions which were not created as KBTs. So what applicator shows you is this plus sign when there is a KBT created for it, and there is no plus sign when there is no KBT. So here, um, and it, there is a delay in the in the details showing. There's a like a fifteen seconds again that fifteen second delay which I talked about. So the moment the transaction occurs, you will see this line item appear here. So the moment I do, um, say I go into this index, I've done that, I come back here, and my index transaction is already recorded. So this is happening in real time. There is no delay. But the, but the details about that transactions are captured by the agent and they are dispatched to the controller and there is about a 15 seconds delay in only the details which become you know when they become available in the in the controller so just keep that in mind uh, this this data is coming in real time uh, the details are coming in a 15 seconds delay and that's done for performance reasons um and you know the it's all happening asynchronously behind the scenes in application. So there is no impact on the, on the performance of the application. So when you guys get this, you know, when you guys install it in your own environment, you're welcome to do your own tests with, with agent, without agent and all that stuff. I mean, because we get a lot of questions on that. Uh, how is the performance impacted? 
the way we we have built applicator the way it is if it is configured properly you wouldn't you have full control over the performance of the application you shouldn't see you shouldn't see even an impact which is measurable so it should be extremely little impact which is not even measurable um, but even then you can you have full control over the performance so let me show you one more thing here uh, what we can do in applicator is we can control what is monitored to what extent so you can choose um, say here in this particular case when i went into this intellitrace configuration and i'm getting into a little bit of an advanced topic here so by default you don't need to go there you don't need to touch it in 98% of the cases you don't need to see this tab and what is happening behind the scenes but in those one or two percent cases when there is okay there is some particular package which is huge and you are monitoring that with the applicator and it's going to have an impact so you what you can do is you can choose the packages which you want to monitor and you can choose what not what shouldn't be monitored so if i start monitoring org apache i wouldn't get a whole lot of benefit from doing that because that's a industry standard product i don't want to be monitoring industry standard products i want to be focused on my applications itself so by default we have excluded many industry standard products but every once in a while we do come across some product which we have not excluded from uh, from the instrumentation so you have full control you can go look for those packages you can exclude them and you can force apply it um, into the into the production environments so that you don't even need to restart the restart the agent so you don't need to restart anything in the environment it can be configured in real time um, but you just have to know what you're doing so there, there are these are the packages which we suggest the this functionality we suggest you to use with care so something you need to understand thoroughly and we can talk more about it offline but i just wanted to quickly touch on that so we enabled end user experience monitoring here um, we started getting that data you guys understand now what comes in real time what comes in a 15 second delay and you are getting um, how to create the kbt's so you you understand all of those things at this point um, so what i would suggest at this point is let's do the deployments at your end let's do the same thing and and i'm gonna stand here i'm gonna be on the standby here and we have our team the rest of the team here on standby so anybody who needs help will be happy to help uh ping ping us and in and we'll be happy to help you does that sound like a plan Yeah, I do want to hear from you guys uh, at this point. Why is it showing Virginia instead of USA? Because um, it is showing Virginia. It is showing USA. It's showing the whole USA, and then it is showing Virginia there. And even when we click on that, we we show separately. We show United States as the country. We show state Virginia. So. Okay. So we are. We are showing, I guess uh, there was some doubt there. Hopefully it is cleared. Can we get the installation files? Yes, you can get the installation files. And let me take you to, uh, I'm gonna share this with you. So this is, all you need is the URL sas.applicator.co. So just go to that uh, URL and then you will download the installation file. So just go to this first of all. Raise your hand if you need help with logging into Applicator at this point. So we can go step by step. Has everybody been able to log in and get to this point? Do they have your, um, are you logged in into your dashboard? 
we will share the PDF file at the end of it. I want you to follow along Gaurav because many times, yeah, I mean, people are just waiting to get the PDF. So we'll, we'll share that at the end. So please work with me in the meantime. So just go to this sas.applicare.co and log in. So I'm, I'm assuming everybody is able to log in. If there is anybody who has issues, let us know. And then we'll go step by step here. We'll go to the next step. Sure, Satish, understand things happen and we'll, we'll talk soon. Okay, so once we have logged in, so the Vidya, the username and password was what you registered on our website with. So if you have, if you are having, if you did not register on our website yesterday, you can go right now to our our website. I'm going to put the link in the in the chat here. Give me one sec. Sign in. Create new. So this is where you're going to go if you haven't registered. So anybody who hasn't registered yet, you need to register to get access to this environment. Um, and we will approve that. So, you know, we'll work with you and um, we'll get you up and running there. But once you are registered, you should be able to log in and you should be seeing the enterprise summary page. And once you have done that, I'm assuming most of you are already logged in. I only got one response. So everybody else is, is up and running, is logged in. So what we'll do is now we'll go into the, in the, in the download agent. So this is what we'll do. And everybody can follow along with me and just go to this download agent. And once you are a, once you are at the download agents and you may have to scroll the menu, uh, sometimes, um, the menu is, is hidden. So here we will just do, let me log in. If I log in and sometimes this, depending on the screen size, this menu may be hidden. You may have to scroll up, um, to get to the, get to the download page and so on. So it depends on how your environment is configured. Okay. So see here, I have to scroll, like I have this menu scrollable. So Okay. So now that's good that we're getting um, cost related questions here. We'll work with you on the cost, Mohammed. We are significantly uh, better priced than other products. So we'll work with you on that. So Vidya, you did not get any confirmation on the email. Let me see who is there to, who can help you right now. Mehek, are you on the on the call? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. So can you help? Okay, so she's good now. Okay. Uh, so registration is successful. So it looks like everybody is able to get in. Um, everybody is gonna, you know, we need to download the. Sorry, <laughs> just give me one sec. Okay, we're going to download the Absolutely, we will have the cost and everything for you. It depends on the environment. We'll work with you on that, Mohammed. Let's just keep it focused on the I don't want to take it into the pricing discussion here. Uh, we will keep it focused on the on the technical aspects of the product. But I'm really happy that you want to know the cost. 
so okay so let's get into that uh, let's get into the details there mahek work with mohammed and uh, we can take it uh, take his information to sure to ensure he yeah. has all the information mm -hmm. yeah. okay so now okay we're going to download this demo tomcat server so the next step we're going to do is download this so i'm going to wait at this point let's see if everybody is able to download this by simply going into the download agents and then there is a sample application at the at the bottom we're going to just get that and this it should download a zip file on your machine okay so i get one done here i guess we'll give it another two minutes um Shiriksha, and we'll see if everybody gets done and we'll move from there. So yeah, good, we are making progress. So this is helpful, if you don't mind, yeah, just put done in the in the chat. That way I know that, hey, you guys are making progress with me. It does get a little lonely in the cyberspace, so it's helpful to get some confirmations for, from, from you guys that you are with me. So we'll give another minute to everybody for uh, for this download of the demo application, and then we'll get into the the rest of the things, getting it up and running, and an extraction. Okay, good. So I got a few done. That's very good. People are moving. We're going to move to the, we're going to continue with the next step. Also download single agent for Windows. I'm assuming you guys are all doing Windows, but whatever your OS is, we can download the agent for, for that environment. We can also download the agents with wget, with curl, um with powershell so there are lots of possibilities in terms of deployment we can remotely deploy the agents onto the machines provided we have id and the password no you don't need to download though that's for legacy environments you don't need to go to that um, gaurav you don't need to download the tomcat agent you're going to just go to the single agent for some legacy environments we need to we do require you to download the older agents, but no, you don't need that for, for this. Okay, so, okay, I was talking about deployments. So we can automate, we at our customers, we have done deployments where, you know, hundreds of agents are deployed overnight and thousands of agents are working uh, in the enterprise. So deployment is automated where we can run scripts, we can run Jenkins task and Ansible tasks, and there are different things which, so it's all automatable where we can remotely deploy the agent onto the machine and it comes and pick, it, it starts monitoring the environment. But here we are just doing it, um, with a single, with the download, straight download from the site, but it's all manageable and automatable. The deployments can be automated and mostly are automated in the enterprise, which you guys know very well. Okay, so I'm assuming everybody's got the, um, these two single agent as well as the, as well as the Tomcat environment we're just gonna extract them into the C drive. So whatever tools you are using in your environment for unzipping it, just unzip into those directories. 
make sure you maintain the directory structure. You, we want to, we don't want to put it in your C drive and clutter it. So please extract it there. And we will have, this is how it should look like at that point. So I'll let everybody follow along with us. Hello? Yes. Yeah, well, so also, let, let me just type in the chat. Yeah, we can. I'm going to paste that in the. Yes, I'm going to put that in the chat. The call command. So Mohammed um, and everybody, uh, let's do that. So it looks like you guys are all configuring the agent at this point. So we extracted the Apache Tomcat and we extracted these two things. Now what we'll do is we're gonna follow this process. We're just gonna go to this this direct this file. Um, I'm gonna put that in the chat too. So just go ahead and edit that file. So edit C Apache Tomcat bin Catalina.bat and add this single line, which I put up just two lines before. I'll put it again in the chat. Yes, I did realize typing that wouldn't be fun. And typing is always error prone. So I'm a big fan of copy and paste. But if you are doing other than the C drive or something, some other variation, make sure you make the adjustments appropriately. Let me know once you guys are up to this point where you have configured the, the Tomcat and then we can move on. So a, a few duns would really help. But if you need any, if you have any other questions, you need help, let me know. Absolutely, Vidya, we'll share the 
with the PowerPoint and the notes with you guys um, at the end of the training. Good, we got one done there. We people are moving. I want to see we bring the extracted file to the root directory in the in the folder. You just basically should have this structure, the Apache Tomcat, and this is the structure we yeah, bring them to the C root directory. Do not extract it in the C. Make sure you extract it in this, in the, you retain the folder. So these are the two things you should have on your I mean if your C is not working you can always do D drive or whatever because sometimes the you're not allowed to depending on what your user permissions are you may not be allowed to paste into C drive create a folder in C drive and and see if the paste option is available that's something like little minor OS issue you at your end, you need to see why it is happening. Anyone else who's done? Did you make Mohammed? Did you found the? Did you find the reason? I would suggest just see if you can create a subdirectory under C. And you can you can call it training and within training you can put this you can extract um, you can create both the folders and extract these zip files
Thank you, Shriksha, for helping. Any more duns? Any more people who have gotten it to the point where we have these downloaded and extracted? Okay, we'll give it another two minutes here and um, then we'll move to the, then we'll move to the next part. So how are you doing, Shriksha? You have moved on to the next, um, you got the Tomcat up and running and reporting data in AppliCare. Okay. Good. Hey, Mohammed, if you want to do a quick screen share, you are welcome to do the screen share and we can um, make sure you can move along with us, but if not, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, we do see your screen. Let's look at that. Yeah, I structured that right here. So these are the instructed files, right? I need to copy this. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. So we're looking at, so you have downloads, applicator. No, no, you don't want to copy that. So go. Okay, let me take the, let me ask to take 
uh, I'm going to take the control of that. So we can get you up and running quickly. Okay, take control, good. So we got this Apache Tomcat. You want to copy this from here. Um, wait, why don't I get the copy option? Oh, copy as no. that. No, let me just do, okay, let me open another window here. Oh, the, the box, the little box after the scissors is the copy option. Do you see something? Yeah, this box. The box after the scissors is the copy option. Give me one sec. I'm trying to open one more Explorer window here. Okay. So here we got, okay, file Explorer. We go to this PC. I'm going to go to C drive. Okay. So now you got, and okay. So now I want to bring this. Okay. So you are good to go. You got your whole folder right there. Okay, and you can do your labs now. So here we got, so we got this here. All right. Huh? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna bring that here too. Shoot, I keep moving the window. Go to the structured one. Okay, wait, no, I don't wanna move it to the windows. You wanted to put it into AppliCare? Are you trying to do that or? Let's let's just put that here for a minute. Hi, Deepak. Please copy the first two folder, extracted one. Yeah, copy the extracted one. I talk. Okay, okay, okay. That's what I was doing wrong. Okay. Thank you, Rob. For jumping in. Okay, let's do this. So this is the extracted one. Okay, so you're you're good to go. Right? You got everything in the right place. You can do your exercises from here. Mohammed, you good? Yeah, good, thank you. Okay, I'll start sharing my screen again. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go back. Okay, so let me get the chat back. Okay, I'm assuming some of you guys have gotten the Tomcat up and running by now. Anyone with the... Um, Shiriksha, if you, if you try to start... Um, okay, let's do this thing. So why don't you share your screen and we'll quickly check what's going on there, if you can. Okay, so hey, um, this is the bug which I was mentioning to you about. You're at the right place. You just do just do a control C here. You are you are actually so just do a control C there. Okay. And just do the restart. Just go back to the previous command and up arrow and that's it. And you should be, you should be fully up and running, and it should be added to your environment. And this is a bug which we have just encountered at the last minute. We're going to address it, um, hopefully within a day. And Monday, you should be, you guys should be golden. So once you address this, should we download the Tomcat setup again, or will the? No, nothing will change. This is only a bug caused us to restart this one time. You don't need to do this 
ever again. It wouldn't impact you. It would only impact when there is a new agent to be deployed. So you don't need to do oh. anything. Oh, this bug is from the agent, is it? I'm sorry. Correct. Mm -hmm. But we have a local copy of the agent, right? If you are fixing something, it will be at your end and we need to correct. Correct. download download the agent again, correct? Correct. So if you're deploying it in some other environment, yes, you will have to download the, I would suggest download the agent again and it should be fixed. It's again at this error. Um, there's another error coming there. Uh, this shouldn't impact you, but let's try um, going into the controller now. You should see, you should start seeing the data. Mm -hmm. Let me see the configuration in the Catalina.bat file once again. It should be in the chat, Mohammed. If you look in the chat, what needs to be copied? It's it's in the chat. The Catalina dot bat. Correct. So I'm gonna send that again. Um, let me put that in the chat again. So yes, Amiksha, you are connected. Okay, this is the one. Correct. Check, is it? Correct. Okay. So what next? Um, so now you should see some, uh, do some transactions on that Tomcat. Should I launch the page again? This is the one which you gave me or uh, will this still no, hold good? You don't want to go to demo. You want to go okay. to the, um, let me send the URL in your machine. So you're going to do the local host colon. So let me share okay. my screen again. Okay. Uh, we, we're going to go back to my screen. Just give me one sec. We're gonna stop sharing from you to, okay, share screen two. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this. Okay, so now um, you got things up and running. Mohammed is getting there. I'm assuming others are getting very soon to that point or they are already there. If anybody got this um, Windows Defender firewall block, you know, this message, you just say allow access because Windows tries to prevent any listener. So when we are starting this Java with the Tomcat, it's a listener and that's what Windows flags, Defender flags. So just say allow access and you should be up and running. So now you're gonna go to this URL um, Samiksha and everybody else, ouch, we want this URL. Let me copy this and I'm going to put that in the chat. I already pasted it in the chat, Deepak. Oh, you did. Thank you, Rob. So, yeah, you want this URL um, and try that. This should work for you in your environment. And then the data would be captured in Applicare Console. So this is the URL you are trying. Once you have the, uh, you know, pet store up and running.
So how many of you have been able to get to this uh, pet store URL working? Good, Sariksha, and let's see if how many others are good. Anybody, so Vidya, are you having some trouble with your environment? I mean, if we can help, feel free to share your screen and we'll be happy to help. We want to make sure everybody is able to log in and and make progress. I still don't see your screen. It's just loading, I guess. It's somehow not showing me the, your screen at all as of now. I still see a black screen with there. You are maybe sharing the wrong screen or something. Yeah, you can unmute yourself if we are in the troubleshooting session. I think it's kind of very slow from here. That's the reason it's not, you are not able to see. Okay, so it's a yes. connection issue. Yeah, can you can you send that uh, instruction so that I can try to look into that? Sure, I'm gonna send the instructions in one minute now. I think- yeah. um, I can do parallelly when you are doing Sure, it. so I'm gonna send the instructions right now. So give me one minute. Mm -hmm. So here, I have just put a link in the chat uh, for that uh, for that file. So you guys can all you guys all have the instructions in the yeah. You can get to that with that link. It's a PDF.
Let me know if you have issues with the file or getting the file. So yeah, we do understand the, you know, download issues and those kind of things depending on the location. Yeah, do provide us feedback um, with yeah, I mean, how it worked for you later on. We'd we'll love to hear from you or any issues you encountered because of the speed of the connection and those kind of things. Yes, sure, I do. I'll come. So I that would be valuable it. for us to make it. Yes, I want to definitely. I'm working on JMeter right now, so I want to bring this tool into my company. That's the reason I'm attending this. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, trainer, you want to please see my screen because I'm trying to launch Tomcat. It's sure. showing me different stuff. Sure, share your screen. So just open a command prompt with. Can with, you see my uh, question? Just open a command prompt, Mohammed. Yeah, sure. No, not from here because this one is not with administrative privileges. Go to search at the bottom, search. Okay. Just type CMD there. And right click and say, oh, no, no, don't open it. You're too fast. Just close oh. this. Just type CMD, right click. CMD, okay. Right click on that right. and say run as administrator. Oh. It'll ask you a question in the background somewhere. It's asking you a question. Okay, good. Now go to that CD Apache Tomcat, CD backslash. I already copied that. Okay. Just Go to that directory. No, no, I just should. keep that open. You don't want to close this. Okay. Just, okay, let me take control. I'm going to request the control real quick. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do CD. Let me see if I have control. Do I have control? Oh, I do have control. Okay, so let's do CD. Why can't I type? Hmm, I have control, but I can't type. <laughs> okay, okay so I want you to go to, I want you to go to this directory. Okay, so just do CD to this directory, Apache Tomcat bin. I don't have a, I don't have control now. Let me see. Let me see. Where are you? CD, right? Yeah, CD space. Uh huh. Space and a backslash Apache Tomcat. If you hit tab, it should show you that. Hit tab. Okay. It's not showing. Oh, it didn't. Okay. So you have to type it's dash Tomcat. It's gonna be one word. There's a dash in between. No, no, dash. Apache dash Tomcat. Slash bin. Enter. Yep. And now hit type startup dot bat. Startup, S T A R T. That's it. So it shows uh, this. Sir, sir, I want to check with you. I am able to see only up to the server comparison in the left pane, the console after reports. I don't see the download agent at all. So that's why I was like 
struggling. Just now I saw the training PDF what you sent. I am trying to follow that. Okay, so I think that's just because your screen size, you may have to scroll up. I did, I did. Muhammad, scrolling up, scrolling down, weird, everything yeah. I tried. Is there any Muhammad. additional thing, uh, privileges or anything like to see all the tabs or is this like? No, I'll be, I'll be right with you. Um, who's talking right now? I'll be right with you. Sure, no problem. So, 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 when, I, so when I did initially, so it shows so Muhammad, you are running into I don't know what is that maximum set local recursion level reached. This is, is what I mean. right with this. Yes. Um, with this, we will have to look at this offline. This looks like um, I, I can't tell what it is right now. There's something not going right in your environment. Yeah, this is what I settings. This is what I saw. Yeah, this is what I saw initially. Yeah, Mohammed, can you please edit the Catalina.bat file? Close this and please edit the Catalina.bat file. You can check what the call command you have added. Right click the Catalina.bat file and select edit. Correct. Yeah, scroll down. Scroll down. Oh, scroll, scroll, scroll up. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, scroll to the top. Scroll up. Okay. So you need to add the call command. The start. Yeah, you did the wrong. You added itself. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem. That's why you're so here. This is what you need to do. I'm going to put that in the chat. Okay. Good catch, Rob. So this is, I think you put the wrong, you found, you put the same file in itself. So that's why it's getting into recursion. Okay. Save yes. it. And now okay. do the same thing with the command prompt. Please open command in an administrator mode. This is going to work. So, Rob, just let it uh, be this way. Yeah, and you're up and you should be up and running shortly. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, good. Good catch, Rob. So now, Vidya, you were, you were having some issue, right? Who needs help? I think I can start it. You got it? Okay, wonderful. Anybody else needs help? Okay, that's good. So it looks like everybody is making progress there. Um, let me share my screen again. And we'll do the rest of the exercises. Okay, so we have one sec here. Let me open a few things here. Okay, so we got the chat. Okay, just before we move on, anybody else needs help with getting Tomcat up and running and with data showing in and it getting connected to AppliCare? Looks like everybody is good there. Yes, Nabi will share the recording um, at the end of it, uh, absolutely. Okay, so, I'm assuming everyone else has gotten the the controller, the data reporting and controller. So we should be seeing these pieces. You, you should be seeing this type of data in your environment. You should be seeing some data on 
average response time. If you haven't created any KBTs, then you wouldn't see these this pieces of data or theirs. So she. So for all of those who have uh, Shriksha, maybe you can show how to enable the user experience monitoring to everybody. If you have yeah. already, have you already done that? Yeah. So I go ahead and show that. that to everybody. That way, you know, they guys they can follow. If anybody hasn't done it yet. Are you people able to see? Right. We are able to see. Very good. So you have built KBTs. That's very good. You are seeing the data. Looks like you haven't enabled user experience monitoring yet. So go into overview on the left. Okay. Okay. Select this aging. The, uh, and then you can just go configure dynamic instrumentation at the bottom. Okay. And now mm -hmm. we're going to move the end user experience profiling from the left. Select that in the left and select the uh, say plus. Mm -hmm. um, and it moved to the right and now you can mm -hmm. hit apply. So what we just did for everybody's reference, what we just did here is we, we did, she did not have the end user experience profiling enabled. So these are various options which you have to enable, uh, you can enable or disable. So say I want to do the JNDI lookup monitoring. I do, I want to do the JDBC connection profiling. I want to do LDAP monitoring. All those options are, they are not always enabled, but you can enable and disable them as needed. We okay, have great. a certain set of defaults. They work very well. So they give you very valuable data without any overhead and that's what we have by default. So now let's go into, let's go and apply. So now you can just hit okay on that. So you have enabled now the user experience monitoring or the end user experience monitoring. And now when you do transactions on, in the pet store application, you will get the information on the map. It may take um, a few seconds right now because it's enabling the exper user experience monitoring and it's, it's good. Now go do some view item and those kind of things real quick. Have done few. No, but like the previous one don't matter now because okay. you once you enable the experience monitoring, only then the data would be collected. So now mm -hmm. it's good. Now good. Now we can go back to the to the applicator. And you should be seeing your data in the user experience. And see you're able to see that you're coming from Delhi. Um, different pages you visited. You can see that data in the in the real time transactions monitoring. You should see your transactions too, and you have created some KBTs. So you're pretty much doing. Yeah, everything is moving along well at your end. Yeah. Good. Uh, I just had a doubt earlier, but I'm. Not sure in which page I got the doubt. Actually, I was looking at the CPU and memory stats when I clicked at a particular point of time. We got a pop up <clears throat> uh, saying CPU usage, but there is no nothing uh, listed out there. So, okay, let me uh, so go into the server analyzer. Click on that, and here you will see all your data from the CPU perspective. So yeah, it did go up beyond a 50% usage, but you look, you're looking pretty good comparatively. I mean, you don't look like you have reached very high CPU utilization. Yeah. Okay. There are a lot many things here. Great. So, yes. There is a lot of data available to you as needed. 
you don't have to look at all of that all the time. Hmm. When needed, you have that information available and you don't, the key is you don't have to configure these things. You don't have to do anything other than just deploy the agent. Because okay. do remember these things will be needed at some point of time, different problems require different set of data. So maybe there is a problem with network connections at time. Maybe there is a problem with the disk at time. Maybe there is number of processes running or, or some zombie process comes in or some process comes in and starts draining your CPU. So then you need to look at the process tab. So different problems require different root cause analysis at different times. And that's why all this data is needed, but you don't have to look at it all the time. That's the beauty of AppliCare that it'll filter out things for you. It'll send you alerts when needed. And rest of the time, it's just watching, monitoring and guarding your application. Any other questions, uh, Vidya? Uh, not as such. Okay. For now. Okay. Thank Hi. you. Hi. Thank Hi. you for sharing the screen. And um, hey, you can keep moving along with the rest of the things. You can stop sharing. Anyone else wants to share screen or needs any help with the? Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 connected to the applicator, but I think I'm not. On when I launched the um, JPS to application is actually showing error. Okay, share your screen. Can you do me one favor? Can you restart your pet store? Maybe you are encountering the same bug which we talked about earlier. Just restart your control, uh, your machine first. Uh, sorry, not the machine, just the pet store. Yeah, I I I do that. Uh, Uh, is showing this and you can share your screen sure let me share my screen yeah. Yeah. Um, can you see my desktop here yeah, I'm, I'm connected to the tomcat right correct I do see that. Sure. So I try to launch this. Because this, I think this war file is already in the Tomcat server. Correct. Okay. So, so, okay. so this looks like your derby is down. Um, let me take the control real quick. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you killed that derby. I guess did you kill the derby session? Let me let me do this thing. I'm gonna take the control. Okay. Let me see when I have okay, I have the control. So the derby, what does it do? So Okay, just give me one sec. Something is not right there. We can look at it real quick. We can look at this. See the derby. Just need to see the derby environment. <laughs> okay, this needs to be running. Um, let's see what is going on here. Um, okay, I'm gonna just do this. I'm seeing one more window. Can you please check what is yeah, the last I know. I just, what is that third window? You have two instances of what is this startup dot bat? Uh, you got two instances running. That's your down. Okay, so let's do. You can you can freshly start the the top. Right. I'm just trying to kill it. That's the problem. You got something majorly wrong with two instances running. Okay, so we're gonna just do. And we can start in command window of the back now, administrator mode. Okay, let me just do that. Okay. 
it's probably asking you something. Okay, good. Thank you. You can you can just start it, um, Mohammed. You know the process. Just start the kill the other window, and you can take the control back. Yeah, it should work for you, Mohammed. once you restart. I mean, I think something went, uh, you know, with two instances running, there were problems with that. Yeah, let me, let me try it out. Yeah, just close Derby 2. I believe we did already, and then restart. The whole thing would come up. Anyone else having any issues and need help? Yes. Please show them alert actions email screen to configure the email IDs for alerts. Sure. I'm going to quickly go there now. So let me, let me show a few more things. Looks like you guys are following along. Let me share my screen. Um, so let me go to, I'm going to show a few more things to you guys. And then we'll let you guys continue these in an offline mode. Um, so, okay, just give me one sec. So I'm going to log in into my environment here. And uh, Rob, you wanted to show when we go into alerts, we go into configuration in actions. See here, any alert you want to get to you, like, so here, there are many default alerts here you can configure what email they should be sent to. So I can just include, hey, this alert should go to Deepak at Arcturus Tech and so on. So you can have, yeah, you can assign the... Or no, we can configure for app basis, Deepak. Okay, we can configure on, um, let's go yeah. back. We can just go and say, hey, for all the alerts for this particular server should go to to Deepak or all the alerts for uh, for a particular app should go to Deepak. So I can just say everything for this app. And one more thing I wanted to cover was you can you can define this app name. Okay, uh, let me open this into a new tab. So when we when we add a server by default, we put the same server name as the app name, but you can go ahead and change the app name. So here, I'm, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go yes, ahead and say- Yes, but in SaaS, we recommend to not the change app name since they have tied to that. Okay, so right now, okay, we don't recommend that, but you, you should be able to do that in the real, not the non-training environment. So keep in mind, this is a training environment right now, which you're working with. And we are running a non-production version here, like a cutting edge beta version right now. So there are a few little limitations, but in the real production environments, you shouldn't have those issues, those limitations. So, okay, so we were talking about that you can have all the alerts for a particular application go to a certain user, certain group of users, 
or certain emails, whatever you want to choose. Um, so here I can just say, hey, every alert for this particular application should go to Deepak. And so from here onwards, all the 11 alerts which we have configured by default would automatically go to Deepak. We so can actually add the email ID and add email ID. And we can also add another email ID here if we want. No, Deepak, the, the top one is the users. Deepak dot to start with the user ID. Correct. We need to add the email ID separately. Below one, we need to add. Okay, so if I say I wanted to do, uh, I also wanted to send it to another email of mine, I can just say, okay, add this to and send it to deepak.batra at arcturistech.com. So now I have added, so both the options are available to you. So this way you will start getting the alerts in your inbox for server availability, for other performance issues with your application by configuring the by configuring the environment appropriately. At this point, Rob, did you want to cover anything else? No, uh, you have covered everything. Also, you have covered everything. Any other questions at this point? Something which we didn't cover. I was in there when the session started. Um, so, Applica is hundred percent Java. It's built in Java, yes, but okay. but yeah, we do support other technologies. It's built on Java, yes. So so now when we've done the configuration, we've done for Java application. So it's going to be the same for .NET. Correct. Okay. Quite similar. So, so the two capture automatically, right? Correct. Okay. So the yeah the screens are it's exactly this like the data is about the same there are some minor differences but it's all the same it's a, it's all quite similar. Well, does it support all protocols? Um, we do have a broad support at this point of different protocols. Um, so yes, I mean I would answer it yes. Like web circuit proto protocols. Correct. Okay. We do monitor web services, microservices. Um, you're welcome to read our blog on our website. Um, so I'm gonna just quickly take you there. If you go there on the blog, um, you know, just you can read different, um, give me one second here. So here you can, you know, how to monitor microservices. If you wanted to learn a little bit more about microservices, um, you can learn more about that. We do have Kubernetes monitoring. We do have AWS monitoring. Um, so all those things are available with Applicare. Um, so in case of any recommendation, um, uh, somebody says, okay, you want to please help me uh, configure this particular tool in my environment. We want to make use of that. And somebody actually contacts you guys for help. Is there any charge for that? Somebody is going to pay because somebody contacted you for the configuration. In no, case that person you can reach issue. us, Mohammed. We will help you in any way we can. Um, okay. You have, you know how to reach us. I'll put the. You can create a ticket on help desk. You know, reaching out to, although you have my number, but, uh, you know, I'm in one time zone and you're in a different time zone, and also. You know, one person may be busy, so you you want to reach out to help desk at arcturistech.com. Just drop an email. We will reach out. We will connect back to you. Make sure you put your contact information. It creates a ticket in our support system. There is a proper tracking and we'll help you in any way we can. Any service cost? I'm sorry? Any service cost? At this point, I mean, hey, you are doing the eval. We want you to try the product. We want you to leverage the product. In the in the real environment, I'm saying. Okay, somebody there is a support yeah. cost at the end of it. Um, yeah, once you, you know, once we sell the licenses, we are not just selling the license. We are selling you. Um, we're making sure you 
are able to leverage them fully. We are making sure you are, you know, you don't have problems and all those things and you have help available when you need it. So we, we do have help included with our license price. Okay. So talking about Gaurav, talking about comparison with other P APM tools, what I would suggest to you is we're looking for your opinion too. If you have experience with other monitoring tools, we'll love to hear from you. How do you find AppliCare in compared to other tools? There is 80 to 90% overlap. You know, we there are many tools which do similar, have similar functionalities, but our differentiators are having the intelligence in the product. So we have this expert system at the very foundation of the product where we have gathered years of Deepak's knowledge and not only just Deepak's knowledge, hundreds of Deepak's knowledge. So every, we have been collecting this knowledge over the period of years from the industry and we have built so many of these patterns in the product. So on a daily basis, you may be surprised to find, hey, I didn't know this problem existed in my environment or I didn't even know this problem is like, you know, so applicator would detect new things as and when those problems occur, because we have built the detection in Applicare. So the user experience, extremely easy to use product. You can get up and running very quickly. You are getting data in a matter of minutes. You know, you don't have to build any dashboards. You don't have to do a whole lot of, or any customization to start using the product and getting to the root cause. So that's number one, you know, very quick, easy to use and to get up and running. And then we have this doctor comes in a box. We are not just giving you the, a monitor. We're giving you a doctor, which is gonna, we're not giving you a stethoscope, which is just gonna give you the heartbeat or something. We're giving you a doctor who's analyzing your data all the time on a 24 by seven by 365 basis and giving you the diagnosis when and as and when the problems occur. And we can take action based on that diagnosis and do the, you know, self-correct, self-healing. Okay. Are you guys compatible with Blaze Mirror? Oh, absolutely. Blaze Mirror is just a load generation tool. So sure. Yeah, load generation tool. So you, you, it's compatible sure. with that, right? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Hope I answered. Uh, how to configure this uh, with a single sign on authentication application? I'm sorry? How do you configure this agent to the agent which has single sign on authentication? Like for secure applications, we have single sign on authentication. Okay. Yeah, like like yeah, ID.me, right? ID.me. See, we, we are running in government agencies where there is single sign on the CAC cards, all of them are enabled. So it's, it's all configurable. We can get into those advanced topics, uh, or we can work with you on the, in a offline mode. Okay. So it can all be depending on the application, depending on, um, you know, what is needed, you can, it's doable. Right. It's doable. That's what I just want to check because right. it is doable. once I take this tool to the company, I should be able to say well, which are all doable and which are all not doable. Absolutely. So that they may take a decision. <laughs> sure. And there's a question from Gaurav on the, how do we create the dashboards, uh, the custom dashboards? I'm going to just quickly show that to him and everybody here. So we can go into, um, into the sensor analyzer here we can just go ahead and create new dashboards. So we can just say, hey, I'll, I can pick up any piece of data from the, um, th there's a lot of data which we make accessible via JMX. Um, so via MBeams, let's put it this way. It doesn't have to be JMX. It can be, um, it can be other technologies like SNMP or uh, performance, Windows performance monitors. So depending on the technology being used, we we have different data which is exposed 
and I can say I want to build a a, a network monitor which is keeping an eye on, uh, let me see what I want to see. The packets dropped. I, I want to see this, this pieces of information, or I want to build a, a dashboard on the ethernet monitoring for me. So I can choose these values. Hey, let me see. Uh, I'm going to select this. I'm going to select, wait, I'm going to select uh, this. I'm going to select this. I'm going to select this speed transactions and packets. And I'm going to just call it a um, network dashboard. Okay. Or, or no, Ethernet, Ethernet dash. Okay. And I want to, uh, and I want to monitor it every, for right now, I'll just do it every one minute. And I, I'm adding those sensors. And now I have created a new dashboard, a custom dashboard. And every minute we will start getting the data into this. It'll start monitoring. The agent would start persisting the data every minute. So within a minute, we'll start seeing the data into this dashboard. So it's extremely easy to make dashboards. And remember, you can choose the type of chart. You can combine multiple data points and build combined charts so you can do different types of uh, different types of charting um, with applicare so here we have started getting the data now and it was that easy to build a custom dashboard i could have custom dashboards with pie charts here or or gauges for different items um, or a chart with different types of you know, data combined from different servers, it's all possible. It's all doable. Great. And, and, and how do we share like uh, summary reports with colleagues? Like, how do you want to share reports with colleagues? Yeah, summary report, for example, yeah, with colleagues. How do I do that? You can even take a screenshot in most places. So, say here, I go into user experience. Wait. Uh, or server analyzer. Let's go here. Um, I believe we have, you can do print. I believe in the, in the, oh, so here. We can even do like, hey, I want to create a PNG out of it. You know, so I can just create a PNG or I can just create annotations. I want to do some sort of annotations. Uh, I want to mark up something here. There's a problem um, and save it as a, PNG and send it to somebody. Are you with me? So now I can download it as a PNG JPEG and here I can send it to somebody. But you can always send the reports to other people. You can print the reports, you can send them to other people and so on. And I also showed you in user experience, um, let's go into last three hours here. And so I go into user experience. I can just say, hey, email this say this transaction is slow for some reason. Okay, I want to send this data to Muhammad, and I'm just going to say, hey, send email to this person. I can add a person there, a uh, person's name and detail, put some subject there. Say here, I'm putting that to sending it to Deepak. Okay, and I added that email. I can add it to other people. This is a test. And here is a test. Here is a bad something for you to look at. Okay. And here I send it to, you know, I send that transaction to Deepak. I guess okay. there's something uh, being stuck there. Maybe I didn't configure something correctly. So, yeah, it's easy to share information with other people with Applicare. Uh, yeah, well, okay. do you guys have any retention policy? Absolutely. So retention policies are defined based on your requirements. So depending on the contract, we will we offer, you know, from seven days to six months to a year, whatever long you want to retain retain the data. All right. 
So Gaurav has a question on the security. Gaurav, we are running, we are in a completely secure uh, AWS environment and we even go above and beyond other tools that we build a separate environment or enclave for every customer. So if say if you want we, we, the American Express data is is going to be completely isolated from United Airlines data, say, for example. So two different customers will have completely separate servers, completely separate um, environment completely separate database so that there is no possibility of even um, the data getting mixed up. Most of our competitors are doing um, a multi-tenancy option where everything is going to the same database. So we are extremely more secure compared to many others because of the way we are building the environment. So we are offering something exclusive to AppliCare that we are able to build you know, encapsulated environments for every customer. Any other final questions? I know we are getting to the end of the time here, and I definitely, again, appreciate the people who have spent, you know, you guys have spent time in the, on a Saturday, with us, so I definitely appreciate your time and we are looking forward to working with you. Any final questions? Anything else you wanted to see or something which we didn't cover? You're welcome to talk on the microphone if you want and Okay, looks like we have covered some ground here because I'm not getting any more questions. We are available to help in the, you know, afterwards, if you need any help at all, just feel free to reach us via help desk. And um, you also have my contact information. Uh, we'll share the recording. And um, I guess, thank you very much. I really appreciate, we all appreciate your time and we'll look forward to working with you. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Bye, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you.